Okay, our study of the Ten Commandments, we pick up at number three. And Exodus 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name vain. Well, look at that. You're not innocent when it comes to the name of the Lord. And vain is empty. And some people think if you say Jesus Christ is a cuss, or if you use GD, you know, yeah, those are taking the Lord's name in vain, but OMG, or just, oh my God, without any, you know, you just say it to say it, or, you know, I, I dealt with people in the ministry, I just love Jesus, I just love Jesus, and you don't love Jesus, you don't have anything to do with Jesus, and Using the Lord's name in vain can also be, you know, you just throw it out there. And it's everyday language. And many pulpits will use Father and God and Jesus. And they are far from the Father. They are far from God. They are far from Jesus. They are far from the Word of God. And that would be vain. And they go contrary. When religion goes contrary to what the Bible says, and they got the God, they got the Jesus, you know, when the priest takes that host and does his hocus pocus, you're just taking the Lord's name in vain because that's not the Jesus of the Bible. So we limit it by, oh, you know, GD and Jesus Christ is a cuss, but when we take it full assurance to what the Bible says, when you use the Lord's name with without any purpose, without any issue or emptiness, then you're you have guilt. You have guilt. Deuteronomy 5.11 And believe me, when you do any public ministry, you'll find people use Jesus and God and, you know, the man upstairs. That's all vain. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 11. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Now, that's the Jewish person. We're in the Jewish writings of the Jewish law, but is not God our God? Is he not personal to us through the Lord Jesus Christ? And we're not to take his name in vain. And, you know, I, I've been in churches where a person's been called on to pray, open up the service, close the service, the meal, whatever, and they, get, they throw out a bunch of fathers and gods, and their life does not show anything. To live and write for the Lord. That would be vanity. The Lord thy God in vain emptiness. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. That taketh his name in vain. Now that's under the law. Under the law is someone. And there would have been people. In Jeremiah's time. They came to the temple. They brought the offerings. And were here for God. And they weren't. It was just a ritual. It was a tradition. And under the law, there was no forgiveness for that sin. You know, they say, there's no forgiveness for adultery and murder. There's also no forgiveness for using the Lord's name in vain. And the false prophets in the time of the Old Testament, oh God, God will protect you, King. God will get you over the enemy. God will be with us. God bless America is taking God's name in vain. And when you ask God to bless America in her sins and her open sins of sodomy and sexual perversion, you are taking God's name in vain. On our money, in God we trust. Are you kidding me? The hands that touch our U.S. money and the currency that we have that has in God we trust, and you're going to say, that's vain. That's vain. In the Old Testament, there was no uh, innocence or resolving to innocence. There was no pardon. But thank God for us Christians today when we do sin to sin, and we probably do. <clears throat> there have been times in my life I call, you know, I use God's name and really no reference. Maybe I've done it in my pride. Maybe I've done it as in my sins. We have, if we 
confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Remember, any time you use the Lord's name in vain, emptiness, with no purpose, a ritual, that's vain. So, <clears throat> we're off to a good start. Romans chapter 2, verse 24. Romans 2, 24. We're going to look at what the Bible says. Now, Paul's talking to the Jewish people in Romans 2, 24 as a terrible testimony to what we have read in the Jewish law. He says, the name of God is blasphemy among the Gentiles, that's the other people who are not Jewish, through you, and then he goes and quotes the Bible verse. God said, I mean, Paul says, there are, the Gentiles are blaspheming, are calling upon God's name in vain, because of you who are supposed to hold his name dear. Now, the Jewish people will, will go capital G dash D because God's name is so reverent and holy, we can't even, in case we spell it wrong. And they're really traditional, particular on those things, and that's going too far. I mean, God is not G dash D. Drop the D, you got GD. That'd be vain. Romans 10. Romans 10. <clears throat> 10 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, look at that. <clears throat> you know, there are people, we're talking about the vanity of God's name being used. There are people in what we call easy believism. Follow this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Please. Please. Jesus. Jesus. Save my soul. Save my soul. And then you go on whatever it is. And there is a prayer out there said to unsaved people by people that if you say Jesus' name, if you say in the name of Jesus, lift up your left foot, raise your right hand, Close all eyes. You are taking the Lord's name in vain and you're not getting salvation. It's, here, say this prayer. Salvation is not saying this prayer. What did it say? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But have you not read the context? Verse 9, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart. When you got a man just saying a prayer for salvation and he's not going to get it, and there's no belief in the heart, he is, every time he uses the name Jesus, God, Lord, Holy Spirit, whatever he uses in that prayer, in Jesus' name I pray, he's taking it in vain under the leadership of a wolf in cheap clothing. You got to make sure that heart is sincere, that heart is believing, that heart is right to call upon Jesus for salvation. Now, many, many times, maybe, maybe I, I walk away from it too quickly. But if I'm not sure that that heart is prepared, I will let that guy send that guy gospel track. Uh, but I will have him have a prayer in fear that maybe he's not ready. I don't want him to use his name in vain. And if a sinner calls upon God, Jesus' name in vain, in easy believism, it is vain. Because there's no salvation. When he thinks he's getting, and then when you deal with those people, oh, I'm saved. I said this prayer. You said this prayer in vain. You didn't mean it. First Corinthians one two. First Corinthians one two. I dealt with a lot of people that easy believism, and it's deadly. First Corinthians one two. Unto the church of God which is at Corinth, Christians, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, 
our Lord, both theirs and ours. So, here is no vanity. You're a saved Christian. And you call upon Jesus Christ because you are his and he is yours. That's not vain. But then again, in our walk, we can use God's name in vain. Especially when we lie about God to get attention, to be the center of the attraction. And we got to be careful. Because when we apply the name of the Lord, and that's God and Jesus, Jehovah, we got to be sincere. Because if we are not sincere, and if it is for whatever reason, just using the name to use the name, we are guilty. And there are all kinds of people out there today in the church, they, you know, they, they will use the Greek and the Hebrew name. And that's vain because God has given us a Bible in the English. We don't need to resort to the, to the names of the Father and the, of the Jehovah that's in the Old Testament of the Hebrew. You're just trying to show how smart you are, how educated that you've learned a word that's not in the English text. I mean, there are Greek and Hebrew words that are in the Bible that, you know, Eli, Eli, Lama Sevectmini. Well, we can know that because that's written. But there are people out there, and, and many in the prisons, that they'll go about the Jewish names and the Hebrew names of Jehovah. And I'm not even going to say it. I, I'm trying not to say them. But I'm telling you, that's using the Lord's name because we got the Lord's name that we can use. God the Father, Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Lord God, that's what's written in English in the church officials for us to call upon the Lord. And there are many churches out there of the Pentecostals and they call upon Jesus for miracles which we're not to have. They call upon Jesus for a sign of the tongue which we're not supposed to have. And that's all done in vain. And when the Jehovah Witnesses go out and they have their Jesus who's not in God, and Jehovah, which has not, they are not Jehovah's Witnesses. And every time they say, well, we're Jehovah's Witness, that's vain. Because first of all, you're a liar. And you don't stand for Jehovah, God Almighty, the Father. And when you ever talk about your Jesus, you're talking about a Jesus that's not God. That's vanity. That's much as vanity to say, uh, what's my Jesus? He's a cookie. And he's a cup of wine. Which is vanity. Banded. 611. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 611. Aren't you glad for today? 1 John 1 9. If we do uh, have this sin in our life, or will do this sin in life, we have the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us. 1 uh, Corinthians 6 9. No, excuse me, 611. And such were some of you, a whole bunch of sinners, verses 9 and 10. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. What saves our soul? The blood and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other name given amongst men whereby we must be saved. That name is Jesus Christ. That's not a name to call out when you're trying to take off that nut on the, on the engine block and you crush your knuckles against the spark plug. Not that kind of thing. That God has provided a holy, a righteous, a name that is above all names is the name of Jesus Christ. And again, in religions that name Jesus is applied falsely, in vain, and there are many in Mexico who have named their boys Jesus, which means Jesus. There's a man in the book of Acts, his name is, is Jesus, and he changes his name. I, I, I don't want to be referenced to that holy and righteous name. Give me another name. And there are people, oh, I've seen Jesus in my toast. 
That's vain because that's not Jesus. And when we again, when we use the name of God, whether it be Jehovah, if it is a Hebrew, or if we use the name of God in, in the Arabic, we use the name of Jesus in the in the Greek, we are using God's name in vain. And then we turn around and say, press one for English. But you use Hebrew or Arabic or Greek. Aren't you press one for your English King James Bible, you fool? Now, if you're teaching a class for the students to know, and you, you know, you, you want to show an illustration, you want to show facts in a study, okay. But I'm talking about people who use the Hebrew and all that just so they can be how smart they are. And a lot of those people I've seen as smart as they are, many of them were in prison. I talked to one guy who was a prison director without no home church. So it's foolish. The name of Jesus Christ, the holy and righteous name, is the one that saved my soul. Now Paul tells us to be aware to the Corinthian church that there is another Jesus. Another Jesus, if it's not the Jesus of God, who is God, who has written the holy scriptures, that is vain. It's a false Jesus. Vain. Philippians 2.9. Philippians 2.9. And I'm telling you, a Christian can be guilty of using the Lord's name in vain. When it has no purpose. It has no character to reprove, help, or exhort another. Philippians 2.9 Wherefore God also has highly exalted him, Jesus, and gave him, Jesus, a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Now let me tell you something. I come from the Catholic Church. Okay? I don't know how many years. You know at the, at the Catholics who believe, you know who is to bow down before the Catholic Church? The Pope. That man will get in his Pope mobile, get in his Pope airplane, and when he land in the country, and the first thing that the, that the leaders of those nations will come up, and he'll, they'll, they'll bow down and kiss his ring. To the Catholic Church, that's the Pope. And he's got multiple names. As a matter of fact, the Pope's name, Pope John, Pope Pius, you know, that's not even their real names have been changed to protect your identity because they're probably thieves and, and child molesters. And they don't want you to find out who's who. But that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. Things in outer space. I understand that there have been some Russian cosmonauts who have died in outer space in their spaceship. And then there are powers and principalities in outer space. The devil's beings are out there. They're going to bow before, not Trump, not Obama. They're not going to bow down to any man but Jesus Christ, the man, the holy, righteous. Everyone walking on this earth is going to bow the knee before Jesus Christ. And if you do it before you die, die by getting down your knees and saying, Lord Jesus, I want to receive you. I am the sinner that that Bible speaks about. I am sorry. I repent of my sins. I get right. You bow the knee before Jesus. And you got salvation. Or anybody who's dead and anybody who's living and buried underneath this earth and has not ever received Christ as Savior at the great white throne judgment, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. They're going to bow that knee. They're going to say, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And they're going to be cast off into Forever. The lake of fire that burned it forever. You want to be an atheist? You will proclaim Jesus. You want to be a Catholic? You will proclaim the right Jesus. You want to be a Jehovah Witness? You'll, pro you'll profess the Jesus that is God. It's that simple. That's how holy and righteous that name is. Acts 2.21 Acts 2.21 Acts 2.21 
it shall come to pass again that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord that's Jesus Romans chapter 10 shall be saved calling upon Mary and her beads are not going to save you from nothing. Facing east, west to Mecca is not going to do nothing for you. Salvation is only wrought through the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is God, manifested in the flesh, born of a virgin, of the tribe of Judah, from the very foundations before the world. Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12, and I quoted this verse. Neither is there salvation in any other. Not Mary. Not Allah. Not my good works. Not my baptism. Not my church name. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The power and holiness of Jesus' name is what saves us. With his blood. Now the blood of Jesus, Acts 20, 28, is the blood of God. So you got to have the holy and righteous God, Jesus, Jehovah. Jesus means Jehovah saves. How can you say, oh, Jesus, and then proclaim that Jesus is not God? you got to have the Jesus who's God, who died, who gave up his ghost, according to the scriptures. And you got to have the Jesus who is God, holy and righteous, lie in a tomb, sealed with a rock, dead, as a doornail. And you've got to have the Jesus, according to the scriptures, the three days and three nights as Jonah was dead in hell, three days and three nights, i got to say that, came out of that grave and was seen above 450 people, alive and well. There are people out there saying, Jesus, uh, he didn't die as soon as he hit that cold slab, that rock, it, he came to conscience. After all your blood was drained from you? Foolishness. So there's one name above all names. You better not use it mainly. Verse 18. Oh, people take the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in cussing and vanity. They'll be shocked. And they called them. And they commanded that them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. The Jewish leaders told Peter and John you can preach anything you want just don't preach Jesus you know you can have any God you want in the public school system today just don't bring Jesus the Bible or God you can have Hindu you can have Muslim you can have Catholic you can have just don't bring the Jesus Get the Jesus out of the school system. Get the Jesus out of the courtroom. Get Jesus out of here. When it comes to Jesus, shut up. You don't want to hear. That goes true for any public ministry. They don't want to hear about Jesus. Something about that name offends and makes people mad. You better use it rightly, and you better use it correctly, and you better use it without vain, Christian. Chapter 5, verse 28. Say, did not we straightly command you, what we just read, that ye should not teach in this name? They didn't even mention the name this time. They're going by their own law. <laughs> The name is Jesus. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man, Jesus, blood upon us. It, well, true. You crucified him. You just don't like the truth. 
And they will get angry when they tell you to shut up about Jesus. And then you won't shut up about Jesus. They will get angry with you and they will get civil matters. They will call the police. They will get lawyers. They will try to change the laws as America is doing today against God, Jehovah, Almighty, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And don't say God bless America. You're using God's name in vain. Because if God would bless America, he will have to apologize to the people in, Jer in Jeremiah's time of Judah. He will have to apologize to the people of Israel that went into captivity under uh, Assyria. He would have to apologize to Solomon and Gomorrah for their wicked sins that America is full for of sins. He would have to apologize to them if he blesses America. He's not going to do it. Stop saying it. And when you do say it, repent of your sin of using God's name in vain. In God we trust. Ha ah, ha ah, ah, ha ah, ha ah. ha. Vanity. You really think Donald Trump uh, blesses God? You think he's really trusting God when he holds his money? Really? You're fooled. I want to hear that man, if he's truly really a Christian, I want to hear that man before all the TV cameras. He knows they hate him. I want to profess Jesus Christ is my Lord God is here and is above all. I haven't heard him say that. You haven't heard him say it either. Only through the grapevine. Only through the grapevine. 41. Verse 40 and 41. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, uh-oh, chastisement for preaching Jesus, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name, Jesus. And daily in the temple in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. When you correctly use the name of Jesus and the name of God rightly, holy, and in the truth, you will be hated. Marvel not the world hates you. And you may be chastised. You may not get things that the world will give you that they'll give others. Because the holy and righteous name of Jesus. And when you have been so chastised by the world and forsaken by family and given up by religions and hated by those who are not saved, you are properly using the name of Jesus. Properly. Psalms 138 too. Psalms 138 too. Psalms 138 too. And there, there's a, a foxhole Jesus. Oh Jesus, you get me out of this situation, get me home. Jesus, I'll do what you ever tell me to do. And then you get home, you don't do it. That's vain. Oh, Jesus, if you get me out of this terrible doctor's report, oh, X, Y, Z. If you don't do X, Y, Z, use the name of the Lord in vain. There are people out there proclaim Jesus is my Savior, and they are not saved. They have not gone the way of salvation through the heart and belief in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are in vain. Psalms 138 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple, a Jewish person, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Thy word. There's one word, only one word. The King James Bible. We hold true to the King James Bible. We're King James onlyism. We are of the word of God. And God said, the Holy Spirit said that above the word of God is the name 
above all names, that the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, that people are offended and hate the name of Jesus. That name is above the word of God. And John 1.1 1, 1 tells us that the word, capital W, is Jesus. You know how important this Bible, King James, is? It is Jesus. John 1.1 1, 1. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Will Jesus ever die again? Absolutely not. He only died once. He will only die once. And him and the word will dwell forever. I've never dwelt forever. I came to be in 1968. When my mom and dad came together, there, there I was conceived. I don't know which month. I was early. Early birth. That's when my eternal life started, right then and there. Christ Jesus started way before. There's actually no start of Jesus. And there was a brief end of three days and three nights, and then he went back for eternal life. Genesis 41, 27. Genesis 41, 27. Forty-one twenty-seven. Or, you know, I think that's four twenty-seven. I think that the one I'm looking at is the colon. Four twenty-seven. Apologize. Four twenty-seven. Well, that's before twenty-six. Ooh, double error. And to Seth, this is the third son, named, but of Adam and Eve. To him also was born a son, and he called his name Enos. And then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. According to that scripture, before Genesis 4.25, Four twenty-six. They called. No one called on the name of the Lord. There it is, black and white. Exodus thirty-four fourteen. Exodus thirty-four fourteen. They had a world of gods. I know you're mad at me because I spoke against America. I don't care. Exodus thirty-four fourteen. Thou shalt worship no other gods. For the Lord, that's Jehovah, whose name is Jealous, capital J, is a jealous God. You know what one of the names of God is? Jealous. And when you worship other gods, God is jealous. Because you are his. You are his creation. He is the creator. And you're giving love and affection to someone else. The devil. Leviticus 19.12 Leviticus 19.12 And ye shall not swear by my name falsely. Neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Let me show you what could be a violation of this scripture. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. And then you lie. And you know you were going to lie. And when your lawyer tells you, say this, and you know it's wrong, and you make that oath. Oh yeah, that's right, that oath is not in the courtroom no more, is it? They took the oath of God out of the courtroom. Why? Because they know you're going to lie. And you can't have God in the courtroom. And if you can't have God in the courtroom, you can't have God bless America. 
Oh, there he goes again. We should shut up about that. No, I'm going to speak the truth. If you don't like it, that's tough. I think God would be well pleased with what I'm saying. I think if you don't get right and correct and confess your sins, you'll find wood and hay and stuff. Plain and simple. Leviticus 21.6 I think the Bible's right, not me. You're going against it. You're reading the same passages I can, and you can write them down and go back and look at them again in prayer. They shall be holy unto their God, the Jew, and not profane the name of their God. For the offering of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God, they do offer, therefore they shall be holy. You don't profane the name of God. Not only do you not use the name of the Lord in vain and vanity and emptiness, that's cursing right there. You don't GD. You don't Jesus Christ when something goes wrong. There it is. That's what you've been looking for. 22 2. Speak unto Aaron and to his sons that they separate themselves from the holy thing of the children of Israel that they profane not my holy name. That holy name is Jehovah. That holy name is Jesus. That holy name is Almighty. That holy name is Jealous. There's an English word that you can use for God's name Jealous. We just read it. Verse 32, same chapter. Neither shall ye profane my holy name. 2416. <coughs> 2416. And he that blasphemy, that's what Paul said in, in uh, Romans, he that blasphemy the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall surely stone him. If you were in the Jewish times under the Jewish law, under the covenant of the, of the law given to the Jewish people by Moses from God on the mount, and you blaspheme God's name, you were stoned to death. Well, the, the only sins that God will not forget under the blood of or anything in the Old Testament is adultery and murder and using God's name in vain. That was a capital offense also, along with a capital offense for adultery and for murder. Why don't those preachers preach about that? Why do they only name two? Maybe the third one is what they do in their off time. You see, they get you on what sins they don't do and they don't do the sins out of the pulpit. What they do do. do. So they look holy and right. And yet there are sins in the Bible they do that they don't preach about. And one of them sins is taking the Lord's name in vain. Emptiness. No you. And then blasphemy, cussing, cursing. Deuteronomy 18, Deuteronomy 18, 22. And I guarantee I've offended some. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, that the thing follow not, it does not come to be, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoke it presumptively, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Let's see. Oh, the Lord Jesus is coming in 1988. Did he come? No. Nope. Look at all the prophecies of coming of Jesus by the Jehovah Witnesses, and that did not happen. Look at all the religions. Jesus is coming. It has not happened. Look at all the religions. Oh, there will be peace this year. And it has not happened. The Bible says, don't be afraid of them. Don't attend their services. Don't have any part of them. They're lying to you. They're not right. And they're using the name of the Lord in vain. Plain and simple. Proverbs 30 verse 9. Proverbs 30 verse 9. 
God is not going to bless a wicked nation. He never has. Never, if they repented and get, got right like Nineveh did, all right. But I don't see America getting right. Proverbs 30, verse 9. Here's a great prayer request. Least I be full and deny thee. Lord, I don't want to be too rich. And say, who is the Lord? Or at least I'd be poor. I don't want to be too broke, Lord, and steal. And take the name of the Lord of my God in vain. Riches or being poor. I was going to say poordom. Riches or, or being poor can cause you to use the name of the Lord in vain. Who knows? Maybe with all the excess money that you're holding in your hands, and God we trust, and God we trust, and God we trust, and God we trust, and God we trust. And, we trust. and if you're poor and down and out and don't have anything, you might want to curse God, blaspheme God, because you're in a poor situation. No pun intended. I did not realize what I just said. So that's why I said it. You know, we might get so high and mighty that we get higher than God, or we may get so down and out that we blame God. That's what Job did. Job got so down and out, he started be blaming God. That ought not to be so. Psalm 74. Psalm 74. Psalm 74. 74, 10. O God, how long shall the adversary approach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? The enemy. Those who are not Christians. And yet some Christians do. Verse 18. Remember that, remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. The enemy and fools blaspheme the name of God. Don't be an enemy of God and don't be a fool. Use the name of the Lord properly. Matthew 12, 31. Lord, we got 15 minutes and we got a lot more scriptures. Let's see what we can do. Matthew 12, 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven him. Forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven him. There's that, there's that, you know, it shall not be guiltless. And many have aspects of the unpardonable sin. My aspect of the unpardonable sin when Jesus was alive and they say, you do it by Beelzebub. When Jesus was really doing by the Holy Spirit. The miracles, all the miracles that they were doing, and the, and the unclean spirit crying out and leaving the body was done by the Holy Ghost through Jesus. And they said that it was the devil, Beelzebub. Calling Jesus and the Holy Spirit the devil and Beelzebub is blaspheming the name of God with Beelzebub. That's a sin. Chapter 15, verse 19. And those other references could be Mark 3.29 and Luke 12.10. We, we're going to skip over those. Matthew 15.19 For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemy. There it is. It comes from your heart. Remember what we read in Romans chapter 10 from the heart man believes unto righteousness? Your heart says God or whatever fill in the blanks vanity and blasphemy. There it is. Mark 7. Mark 7. Mark 7. 22. Of course, you know, today my the page in my Bible is sticking. That's not helping. Mark 7, 22. Theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Then we, then we already read in Psalms that the fool blasphemy the name of God. Well, there's a blasphemy again. Those are the sins of the heart. When you use or blaspheme the name of God, it comes from your heart. 
That's the source. Luke twenty two sixty five. Luke twenty two sixty five. And many other things blasphemy spank 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 talk they against him Jesus. There's things that happened that day with the Jewish council before Jesus. When he's standing before the Sanhedrin, they blasphemy Jesus, and that's blasphemy God. They violated the third commandment. And there was a way for them to be guiltless. Can you imagine what the way of being guiltless would be for them? After Jesus Christ rose from the grave, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Well, along with the book of Acts. Maybe some of them did get right. I don't know. Maybe they were there for Peter's preaching in Acts chapter 2 for the Jewish people. But under the law, that's one of them death penalty uh, commandments. Colossians 3.8. Going back to the church age. Colossians 3.8. But now, ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Can a Christian use the Lord's name in vain? What have we been following saying? And what does Paul say about it? Put away the blasphemy. The Jews were doing it, Paul said the Gentiles were doing it. Christians put away the vanity of using God's name in vanity and blasphemy. And cursing. Don't do it. And when you do do it, repent. Believe. I was going to say believe. Uh, confess your sins, and He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. First Timothy one. Fifteen. First Timothy one fifteen. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of who I am, chief. That's the one. Look at verse 13. Who was also before a blasphemer. Paul blasphemed the name of Jesus before he was saved. You think he's going to hell because he got saved, believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, got right, but you know, you committed that sin under the law, Paul. And thank you very much for writing the churches, but I gotta send you off to hell, even though you've been the blood has been applied to your life. Absolutely not. Paul broke the third commandment. He admitted to breaking the third commandment. Verse 20, same chapter. Of whom a hiding menace and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, good going, Paul, that they may learn not to bless me. So you can vain, you can blaspheme, and you can profane the name of God. I advise you not to. And when you do, repent and plead the blood of Jesus Christ and try not to do it again. Uh, okay, 2 Timothy 3.2. 2 Timothy 3 2. We're doing good now. Doing good. 3 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfie. <laughs> Selfie. <laughs> Selfies only show you ain't got no friends to take your picture. Covetousness. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemer. Blasphemer. Disobedient to parents. Oh, look at that. Blasphemers. Will we get rid of the sin of taking God's name in vain? Paul says, nope, it's going to get even worse in the end times. As we get closer to the end of the church age, it's going to get worse. When it gets to the tribulation period, we're going to look in a moment, it's going to get exactly worse. Listen, evolution getting better is not true. The church age ain't getting better. It got worse. It makes God sick. 
Try that one out. All right, Revelation 2 9. Revelation 2 9. Everybody loves the book of Revelation. I don't think I'm going to like it with you. There we go. That's right. Dude. Do the book of Revelation study. People won't like it. He's teaching it. Revelation 2 9. I know thy work. God says. Thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Are you Jehovah Witness? Yes. We're the 144,000. Jewish? Yeah. Liar. You're blasphemy. You're blasphemy. Jesus is not God. You're blasphemy saying Jehovah, you're a Jehovah Witness. And you're blasphemy to say you're Jews and you're not. The Jehovah Witness is a blasphemy outfit that denies and uses God's name profanity in vain and blasphemy according to the scriptures and Jesus Christ has not come the three times they said they would come but they're liars Ooh. 13 5 Revelation 13 5 he offends me 13 5 and it was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. There's the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to speak blasphemies against the name of God and Jesus. And the world will love him. And the world will fall after him. Verse 6, and he opened his mouth and blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name. The Antichrist violates the third commandment and violates the name of his creator because the Antichrist, the devil, the fifth cherub, was created by God. And when you blaspheme the name and works of God and Jesus, you are in the footsteps of the devil incarnate, the Antichrist. Not a good path to walk. 16.9. Chapter 16, verse 9. And men were scorched of the great heat, tribulation period, and blaspheming the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. God is sending tribulation upon the earth, great heat, and they're blaspheming the name of God instead of repenting. Instead of calling upon God to save their soul, God, I curse you. God, I, I can't even say. Filthy. Filthy. The same thing they did to Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Filthy. Verse 11. And blaspheming the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores and repented not. Notice the blasphemy and no repentance. That is the period of the tribulation period. God is, I ain't going to repent. Shame. Verse 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven and stone about the weight of a town. And men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail. All they do is blaspheme, blaspheme, blaspheme. In the tribulation period. They're GD in this and GD in that. And Jesus Christ not the glory and honor. Get bounced off the head with a giant hell so Get hit in the arm with one have The old nature was set in. Why? The Antichrist is doing it. The Antichrist is doing it. And it's something we ought not to do. We read Paul said, we ought not to be blasphemed. And when you take the Lord's name in vain, it's blaspheming. It's vain. It's not right. I can't think of that third word. It's serious. And then when we violate the third commandment, I've taken the Lord's name in vain. We violated the first commandment. God first. If God was first in our life, we would not be using his name. We would be very careful to use his name. 
Very careful. I mean, if you're sitting at the, you're in your office, at the place of your workplace, and you're sitting there, you're not going to openly, anybody would not openly rule and cuss out and deframe the boss if they knew he was coming. And the fact is, when the boss is there or in the area, you're not going to say those, dark, those bad things against him, unless you're a fool. And we got to remember that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And when we use God's name, God's there. It comes from our heart, and our heart is desperately wicked, Jeremiah says. And we ought to love God first in our life. So being God first in our life, we ought not to be using name in vain. And remember, it's not just cussing God's name. It's when we just use the name of the Lord just to use the name of the Lord. You know? How about you're ashamed of Jesus? You one of them Christians? Well, yeah, I'm yeah, one of them Christians. You don't live up to the name of Christian. You may be one, but in name and duties thereof of being ashamed of Christ. Jesus said, if, you know, if you deny me, I'm going to deny you before the fathers and the angels. Now, if you honor me and honor my name and all that, man, I'm going to bring your name up to the father and the angels. We cannot haphazardly use the name of the Lord. We got to use it with intention. We got to use it holy. Not right. Holy. The name of Jesus. Or we come to violate the third commandment. And we're only the third. We violated God already by the first. We don't put God first all the time. And there are some who violated the second commandment. Images and idols. And we can do that as Christians too. But that's. Get that lesson about the second commandment. 